This is Dave Toronto. Welcome to Cut Through the Noise, where we will talk about things like communication, people, business, leadership, and life. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, today I'm going to talk about discipline and confidence. Before I get too deep into that, I want to talk about before I started my company, where my head was at. I had people asking me, what is it that you want to do? The reality is, is I always said I wanted to work for myself. I always said I wanted to have my own business. But the truth is, I was scared and I didn't know how to start it. And I didn't know if anybody was going to buy anything from me. And I didn't know how to fill out the paperwork with the state, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't know how to get health insurance. All these reasons why uh, the timing wasn't right. And then when I actually took the plunge, I realized, well, this isn't tough at all. It's actually much easier than I thought. Um, That being said, before I started, one of the questions that was posed to me a lot was, what is it that you want to do? What's your ultimate goal? You know, do you want to be a hundred million dollar company? Do you want to, do you want to take over the world? All these things. But the reality is, is at its core, the only thing I really wanted to do was help people stand on their own. I wanted to build confidence in people. And my, my opportunity was to help uh, companies build confidence in their people. So if I could, if I could do that, my belief is, is the more people that we have that believe in themselves, the more apt they are to stand in their own, to make decisions, to make progress, to make a difference to, um, for, for other people, for their organizations, for their families, et cetera. So my goal is to help build confident communicators that can stand on their own. And that's the core uh, of the work I do with all clients, whether it's uh, coaching them one-on-one, training them in one of our workshops, going on site and working with teams to work through problems. The ultimate goal I have is to build confident, self-sustaining people. So discipline and confidence. Um, you know, be nice. It would be nice if everyone was just born believing in themselves. Uh, the reality is, 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 is over the course of our lives, we either learn to believe in ourselves or we learn not to believe in ourselves or, or somewhere in between. We, we do sometimes and other times we don't. And I've had clients ask me, well, can you really teach that? And, and my answer is yes. You, you can actually teach somebody to be confident. And that's where the discipline comes in. If, we, if we're able to identify the required disciplines to develop confidence in ourselves, then we can we can we can help other people identify the required disciplines to develop develop confidence in themselves. For example, if you want to be a guitar player and you want to be confident at playing the guitar, the discipline required would be practice, taking lessons, uh, playing the guitar when you're at home when you're not at a lesson, um, taking the time to get familiar with the chords, studying the music watching YouTube videos, taking the time to be disciplined about those things will ultimately lead to a confidence in playing the guitar. Same thing with exercise. If you want to be, I remember the first time I joined a gym 20 something years ago, I wanted to be stronger. So I joined a gym about a mile away from my house. And I remember walking into the place for the first time. And I felt like a, a a tiny little gazelle walking into a a pride of lions. <laughs> First thing I want to do is run out the door. But it took the discipline to go back over and over again. And, you know, just just, get, just establishing the willingness to walk through the door and pick up a weight and ask a question ultimately helped me build the confidence to, to, to do it and, and, and make it a make it a uh, uh, just part of my life to this day. Um, health and wealth, and this is, is a better, better priority, but it wouldn't be, and I wouldn't be confident about it in the same way that I am had I not had the discipline to continue to show up at that gym 25, whatever, maybe it's probably more than that, 28 years ago. So in, in at work, you know, when, I, in, when I'm working with organizations, there are all different kinds of people at all different levels inside of these companies that would like to be more confident with what they do. There are executives that would like to be more confident presenting to their teams. There would there are executives that would like to be more confident making decisions. Um, some, believe it or not, even at the highest levels, make decisions because they want to be popular. 
They don't necessarily make decisions because they believe in them. Uh, they'll, they'll, uh, there, are, there are some that, that avoid the tough decisions because they're not popular, so they'll make the easy decision. They don't have the confidence to make an unpopular decision. Um, there are some you know, management level people that are really uh, challenged to have a difficult conversation with somebody else. So <clears throat> they hint or they avoid or they, um, <clears throat> you know, they, 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 uh, you know, they, they make people feel maybe better than they should make them feel, hoping that that will lead them uh, to the realization that they have to make an improvement. And that generally doesn't work. Um, when it comes to just other folks, just the confidence to make a call if you're on a sales team or the confidence to walk into a, uh, an executive's office for the first time if you're not an executive. There's all sorts of things that people struggle with professionally. <clears throat> but in order to find that confidence, it's on us to help them or on me to help them find out what are the required disciplines to potentially help you build that confidence. So if it's an executive that you know, wants to be more effective at presenting, well, let's, let's secure some opportunities to put you up in front of a room. Let's, uh, let's secure some opportunities to put you out at an event where you're a speaker or where you facilitate a conversation. I remember the first time uh, I had to stand up in front of a room to present. It was horrifying. And now I have to do it every single time I'm in front of a client, in front of strangers on a regular basis. It could be a keynote talk. It could be walking into a company around a boardroom for the first time. It could be companies sending their people to me at a public workshop. But the bottom line is, had I not consistently put myself in front of a crowd, I would not be able to do that today. I would not have the confidence to stand up in front of a room today. You know, 10 years ago, all I was thinking was, are they going to pay attention to me? How am I going to occupy all this time? They're coming for three hours or six hours or eight hours. What am I going to say that could possibly be interesting enough for these people to listen? But it was the discipline to not only show up and stand there, but the initial preparation and the uh, making sure that I understood what I was talking about and studying before I got up there that helped me develop the confidence to do it. Um, tough conversations I alluded to earlier, you've got many, many people inside of organizations that should be having very direct conversations with colleagues or subordinates or their bosses, managers, and they don't. Why? Because they don't have the confidence to do it. They're afraid that if they initiate a tough conversation, that it's going to lead to an argument or a disagreement, a fight, pushback, uh, defensiveness, uh, you name it. They're, they've already predetermined that there's going to be a negative outcome. So what do they do? They avoid it. The only way to develop confidence is to, one, is to, ha is to be willing to have it and to have it. But two, develop the discipline and the mindset to, to, to see an achievable outcome that benefits both sides. A tough conversation does not have to be a win-lose. In fact, it shouldn't be. A tough conversation is just honest, candid um, dialogue between two people with a mutual commitment to work through it. And even if you, you can't control how the other person is, is what they're going to say or what they're going to think, but the bottom line is, is if you go into it with the discipline to achieve a win-win outcome with them, odds are you're going to get there together. The discipline to have those conversations and the discipline to be open-minded will develop, help you develop the confidence to have a tough conversation. So that's, that's, this particular formula can be applied to anything. And every single time we commit to discipline, we expand ourselves. The more disciplined we are about anything means the more we're willing to practice that thing, whatever that is. Shooting a basketball, you know, uh, going to the gym, riding a bike, doing push-ups, uh, playing the guitar, having tough conversations, no matter what it is, the more we apply discipline to that, the more we're able to do it. The, the, and, and, and the more often we do that, the less we have to think about it, the more confident we, be, we become with the, with the action. 
And the more we're able to pay attention to the other person. When we don't have confidence, all we're doing is thinking about ourselves. All we're doing is thinking about how do I look? Do I sound stupid? Do I look stupid? Uh, I don't want to look stupid. I'm afraid of what they might say back to me. I won't know what to do if they say this or they do that. When we lack confidence, every decision we make or don't make is tied back to how we think we're going to look. When we do have confidence, every decision we make or don't make is just tied to our willingness to do it and our willingness to take a chance and our willingness to achieve a better outcome and our willingness to, to, to grow and our desire to grow. We're not worried about how we look. We're just worried about or concentrated on how are we going to grow? How, we belong in this room. I don't have to be perfect. Confidence is about being totally comfortable with who we are at any given point in time, especially when we're not perfect. That's what true confidence is. Confidence is not about how we compare to other people. It's not about winning or losing or anything like that. Confidence is about I'm totally content with where I am at this point in time with the understanding that I'm constantly evolving. I'm always able to get better. I'm always able to make progress. That's what confidence is. And knowing you, you become more confident, we all become more confident when we understand that as long as we commit to the discipline, as long as we commit to the practice, we're going to get better, we're going to grow, et cetera. These are the types of skills that I work with my clients on a daily basis. And my goal is to help every single one of them pass this mindset, this energy, this way of thinking onto their peers, onto their colleagues, onto their subordinates, onto their leaders. And the more people that we can get to hone their skills, develop themselves, believe in themselves, work on their confidence, become rigorous with their discipline, the better off we're all going to be. The last thing this world needs is another person, another victim, Another person feeling bad for themselves, another person feeling like they don't belong, another person feeling like they were left out. We all have choices to make. And rather than be disciplined about our excuses and our reasons as to why we can't or, you know, why we won't or already predetermining a negative outcome before we've even tried, as long as we're more committed to that stuff, we're not going to grow. We're, we're not, our confidence is not going to improve. So my challenge to every one of my clients and everybody I know is always to be more committed to the discipline than you are to your excuses. Excuses get us nowhere. We can't go into anything with the idea that, you know what, if it, you know, he, he'll, this will be my reason if things don't work. Well, the reason I didn't win is because I wasn't feeling well. Uh, I would have done better had I tried. I just didn't feel like trying. Or I've got a million priorities. You know, I had to do this with the kids or, you know, the, 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 the water, the, the, you know, the water heater broke, blah, 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 blah. All the reasons why things didn't get done. When we're disciplined about the excuse, we're eroding. We've got to be disciplined about being disciplined, disciplined about our commitments, honoring our commitments, doing what we say we're going to do. That's what builds confidence. That's what allows people to stand on their own. That's what allows us to contribute. I challenge each and every one of you to do that with yourselves so that you can help somebody else do it for themselves. Thanks again for listening. For more information about JCE, check us out online at JCE grp.com or follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. If there are topics that you'd like to hear us discuss in the future, we would certainly love to hear from you. Have a great day. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.